<laughs> modifying our method here, and uh, ready to start act two whenever you're ready, Darcy. Act three, scene one. The same day, about an hour later. Winnie's in the living room, biting her nails. Is she all right? You mean since being assaulted while starving to death? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Can I tell her I'm sorry? She's not going to talk to you. She's not even really talking to me. Oh, God. Lights up on Nitya in bed in the other room. She whispers a prayer, barely audible. Projected text, if shot by a gun or pistol, or beaten by a stick. This is it, Whitney. You know she's not going to change her mind. अगर बांध कर जेल में डाल दिया जाए, क्या मैं अपना शरीर खो सकती हूँ? लेकिन मेरी महान क्षमा नहीं। Projected text of bound and thrown into a prison. May I lose my body, but not my noble forgiveness. Lights out on Nitya. I had an idea. Dr. Bernman think he thinks she's in her right mind, right? But I'll bet you she didn't report the hallucinations. If I give him a call back or even find someone else, we could have her reevaluated. And what then? Then they could legally feed her. Oh, we care about legal all of a sudden. You don't really want them to drug her up and force feed her, do you? I, I don't know. I, I want her to live. Look, I know you developed this whole sister slash savior complex surrounding her. A what complex? And that you think you're doing this for her? Or that you think you think that? But here's what I see. Every morning I see you go in there. You water your plants. And then you water Nitya. First of all, I love my plants. <laughs> but my plants support me. I support Nitya, and I never stay up for four days for my plants. I know you care about her. I do. But at what point are you going to let this go? I won't. I can't. And there it is. There's what? Ask yourself this. Have you, Whitney, ever in your life, ever been the one to end a relationship, any relationship, romantic, platonic, whatever? Have you? My dad, after my ribs. Okay, fair point, there's one. Any others? What about Adam? That's not the same thing at all. But if you really feel this way, then like I said, you let her go. I can't. All I can see is everything that could go wrong. You're right, it's easy to criticize. I'm a pussy, but it wasn't me who tied her down in the first place. So what you're saying is, if I love something, I should let it go. And if it doesn't come back, it was never my <laughs> If that works for you, sure. <laughs> well, like, give me a little time to think about it. Only if you promise that you will never lay hands on her again, no matter what. No, no, of course I won't. No, no, not of course. Promise me. I do. I promise. I, I'm sorry. I can't sleep. I'm trapped here all day, and, and she's dying, and it's all so shitty. And yeah, I... it really is. But nothing is better than this, right? I, I, I know it doesn't feel that way right now. But... No, I, I think it does. I think it feels like maybe nothing would be better than this. Oh God, that's awful. Mm -hmm. Good night, Moonbeam. End of scene. Scene two, the next morning, March 29th, 12 p.m. Lights up on Nidia, in bed in the guest room. It's one of those stark white afternoons, bright without warmth. We hear Whitney off stage. Flip? Are you in there? Flip? We hear a door handle being jostled off stage. Please open up. If you're in there, I'm getting really scared. Flip, Flip, answer me. More jostling. After a moment, Whitney enters. Nidia, it's Flip. I don't, I ain't. What happened? I don't, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Calm down, tell me. Flip is, I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him all morning. We, we were talking last night and he, he was saying, I don't know what he was saying, but I, I didn't like it. And then today, I haven't seen him, and it's, it's, it's already after two, and I haven't seen him, and I, his car is still here, but the door to his room, it's locked, so I thought maybe he, he'd gone for a walk, so I called him, and I, and I hear his phone, it's in his room, it's on vibrate, uh, but, and I can hear it, it's buzzing up against something, and flip, 
He's always been such a light sleeper, even if he's drunk or high. I can't, I, I can't even think that he, Whitney, he might have. Whitney, you must open the door. It's locked. Can you force it? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Nitya thinks she looks at the door. The door to Flip's room, is it the same as this door? Yeah, 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 bring, I think so. Bring me hanger. A what? Yes. A hanger? A wire hanger for clothes, hurry. Whitney exits. A few moments later, she returns with the clothes hanger. Let me up. Out of bed? I need my arms to show you how to pick a lock. Okay. Okay. Whitney okay. unstraps Nitya's okay. upper body. She gives her the hanger. Nitya's very weak and her hands are shaking, but she unfurls a portion of the hanger into a straight wire. Listen to me. When you look at the lock, you will see a small hole in the center of the uh, the knob. You push this wire into the hole. The wire must be straight in. See? Yeah, straight. If it is, you will feel something from the other end. What is this? A pressure. When you feel it push, if you do it right, you will hear a... Then you can open the door. Get your hands with either hanger. <sighs> you must do this with me. When he takes a deep breath and exits. Hanger in hand. Nitya is left alone. She waits some pins and needles, but after a moment she realizes her upper body is still unrestrained. Nitya fights with the restraints on her legs, managing to untie them. She swings her legs out of the bed and tries to stand, but her legs give out and she collapses to the floor. She uses the bed to stand up, her whole body shaking. I've, al I've almost got it. After a few moments, we hear a door open slowly a brief silence. He's, he's not in here. Oh, good, very good. Nitya looks around the room, thinking quickly. She grabs the plant Victoria and carries it to the bed. She waits. He, he left his phone. I, I'm calling his boyfriend Ian. I'll see, I'll see if he. Nitya? He is not in bed. Please, please get back in bed. He, I, I, I'm still- That is good. He left a note? No, 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 it's it's nothing. But he is all right. I, 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 I don't know yet if he's all right. What are you, what are you doing with, with, with Victoria? It is very relieving he is not in bed. I hope you find him. But right now, you must let me go, Miss Anning. Please, I don't want to leave hands on you. Careful, please, 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 please. This plant, this is Queen Victoria, yes? Yes. I do not want to hurt this plant, but if you do not let me leave, I will. Oh, come, come on, please, please, please put her down. We I can will, talk, we I can talk. Will give her back when you let me go. Do we have a deal? I'm, I am. Do we have a deal? I, 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 I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. Please don't hurt her, please, please, please don't hurt her. Oh my God. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Realizing she broke her promise to flip, Whitney returns to the floor. She lovingly gathers the broken pieces of Queen Victoria in her arms, then stands and exits. A 
have been seen. Scene three, the same day, 5 p.m. Nancy lies in bed. Miss Adding? Hello, Miss Adding? <laughs> Miss Adding, I must speak to you. I am sorry. What I did was wrong, very wrong. I have decided something. What happened with Philip, it was very scary to me. Perhaps I am not ready for death. Perhaps there is more for me to do. For now, I have decided to renounce my vow. What happened this morning uh, convinced me. And your kindness, it convinced me too. I lied. Flip. He did uh, leave a note. Um, let her go. I talked to Ian. Flip's ex. He hasn't heard from him. Ian gave me the number of one of Flip's brothers, but he hadn't heard anything either. But Flip's out there. He, uh, he then wrote me for rent this month, about an hour ago. Not sure how since he left his phone, but I let Ian and his brother know. Then he is alive. Yeah, but I don't know where he is or how he is. Before he left, Flip said some things, and I'm starting to get scared. I've done something really terrible keeping you here. I'm sorry. I really thought I knew what was supposed to happen, but and now, you're, now you're saying you're not gonna starve yourself anyway? Yes, you and Flip convinced me. I must return to my temple for guidance. My teacher will be very pleased. Then, then would you eat a little something? Get a, get a little energy before you take off? I will go to temple and eat. We have ways of eating after long fasts. Should I drive you or get an Uber? It is better for you to walk. And what about your sister? My sister? Gia, won't, won't, won't you hear her again if you eat? I, uh, yes, probably. I will have to be strong. Will you let me go? Will you? You do not believe me. I, I don't know. I want to. But you must believe me. I, I have changed my mind. I do not know how to prove it, but, and I will tell no one what has happened. I promise you, please, release me. Okay. Oh. Thank you. This is very good. Thank you. Whitney unties Nancy's upper body. She stops before untying her legs. Uh. Wait here. Concerned that this opportunity might disappear, Nitya undoes the restraints on her legs and sits up. Winnie enters, carrying a journal. Maybe I ought to hate you for what you did. I'm sure you hate me for all I've done. I do not hate you. But I can't. And I can't not care what happens to you once you leave. I have such a heart for you, Nitya. I don't, I don't know how to turn it off. So would it be all right if I read you a little something before you go? It's what I wrote in my journal after my mushroom trip. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, I, if, if, <laughs> <laughs> if you wish to. I was drinking a lot at the time. 
I was an alcoholic for all intensive purposes. <laughs> My dad had hurt me really bad. I had to get surgery. My boyfriend at the time, Adam, he helped me through my recovery. He's the only person I've ever been in love with. And you know, it turned out like my body was built for that, to just light up with love. But I cheated on him. And I couldn't understand why it didn't make sense as a story. He'd helped me through so much and I couldn't forgive myself. Maybe I still can't. When we broke up, I wanted to die for a long, long time. But then I tried mushrooms. And, and I know, I know maybe it comes across kind of dumb, but they put me in touch with the universe. They really did. And, and the universe told me that everything will be all right. It said other things too. Maybe I'm not sophisticated enough to say them right now, but I know them. The next day, I didn't want to drink. And I haven't ever since. And then I promised myself I would never, ever let my dad have the opportunity to hurt me ever again. And then, well, I made this list. It's a list of the things that make me feel whole, even when it feels like no one in the world loves me back. What you lose? When you walk outside in the morning and the cold air wakes you up. When you see an elderly couple walking down the street holding hands. When you can just like tell what a dog is thinking. <laughs> when a boy knows exactly how, I'm, I'm not going to say that one. Um, <laughs> the way making someone else feel better makes you feel better. And when someone tells you something like you've always known, but you couldn't ever put into the into words you know that's that's all I wrote down I think I like had to go to the store or something but there, there's a lot more. <laughs> it is a very nice list thank you for sharing no no it's it's not enough what I'm trying to tell you is Nitya you believe all life is sacred right yes but doesn't that include you Flip said something about bacteria and stuff, and I've been thinking, you have all these tiny little bugs all over you, and all in you, and, and they will die if you die. I think they'll mostly die. And you have memories, memories that no one else has, and you carry all the people you have ever known in you. And you're worried about aphids, Nitya. Your whole city, and you would just throw that away. No, I told you, I would I not. know, I know, you're all better now, just like that. Well, in case you're not, fuck you, Nitya! For even thinking about it, every good feeling anyone or anything ever felt, they all felt it here in life. There's nowhere else to put it. And look at you, you're just so young. We both are. We haven't even met some of our favorite people we'll ever meet in our entire lives. No, that's not... God, I still haven't said it right. You have said enough. I'm ready to go. Thank you for everything. It's Annie. Wendy, ripping the page out of her journal and handing it to Nitya. Here, here, I want you to keep this. She takes out a cheap cell phone. And I, and I went ahead and got this for you too. I cannot own a phone. Then we'll say it's mine and you're keeping it safe for me. Forces it into Nitya's hand. There are five numbers saved on here. Four of them are psychiatrists in town. If you're really serious, I want you to find one you like and tell them about the things you hear. Maybe they can prescribe something to help you. Thank you, I will consider this. The fifth number is mine. Please, when you get to a better place, when you feel good, and steady and safe. Use this phone and get back to me. Get back to me, okay? Just, just get back to me, please, oh God. Goodbye. Thank you for... Unsure of what else to say, Nitya exits. out her phone and looks at it. 
He types out one last text to Adam. The projected text reads, I decided I have to forgive myself, even if you never can. I hope you have such a good, good life. Blackout, end of scene. Scene four, projected text, six months later. Lights up on Whitney downstage left in the living room of her new apartment. The apartment is non-realized and bathed in darkness, like the sidewalk. There are clothes and other assorted items scattered around Whitney, who is at church, spinning a wand on her bowls idly. She stops and sighs. She hits a bowl with her wand in frustration and gathers the bowls up. Her phone buzzes. We see a text projected from a number not in Whitney's phone. It reads, I'm sorry for how everything went down. I know if there are any good people, but I think you try to be one. And maybe that's enough. Whitney calls the number. We hear a phone vibrating somewhere in the dark from downstage right. Someone picks it up. Whitney waits for a moment then. What? <coughs> Lights up on Flip downstage right. He's in an unknown location, hungover, lying on his stomach with a phone to his ear. Al, do you know it was me? I got a new number. Your text. It's all in lowercase. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> kind of screwed up my romantic one mysterious text plan. <laughs> Where are you? How, how are you? I don't know, and I don't know. Why did you leave like that? Like, what's the matter with you? There's some shit Nitya said about shedding the skin of your life. I'm paraphrasing. I just wanted to get out, sort of take my own vow of non-ownership, go to the mountains, get naked, maybe find a bridge to live under, charge people a toll to cross it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started selling these little bullshit knickknacks I've been making and needed a phone, unfortunately. Hmm. After that, life kind of crept back in. So you just text me out of the blue like nothing happened? Well, no. I'm saying sorry. I am. I am. I'm... I'm actually trying to quit drinking again. Thought I'd hit up my old sponsor. Flip, you know he relapsed? Well, it's good that you reached out. Every journey begins with the first step. Oh yeah, a thousand one-step journeys. If you can figure out where you are, I'll come and get you wherever it is. No, baby. Please, I want to help. I know you do, but not this time. Heal thyself. He sits up. What happened with the other thing? Did you let her go? Yeah, yeah. The day you left, I gave her a phone so she could text me, but she never did. I tried calling a week later, but it's been disconnected. I uh, really wish I'd been wrong. Anyway, how are you doing? Oh, you know, eating too much, sleeping too little. My plants died. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't feel like I could kill the aphids anymore, and yeah. The apartment people let me move into a one-bedroom after you left, but it still feels too big, though. Should be more affordable, at least? Yeah, supposedly, but except... What? The hospital finally brought all the nursing residents back in full-time this month, and then they set us all down and say there's been supplies going missing. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Christine immediately starts crying, and she ratted us both out. What a dumb bitch. <laughs> Did you get fired? I was gonna, since I took an IV and they guessed I'd given it to my roommate, which apparently is like practicing medicine without a license, but I said I only administered what I had already been prescribed and that I misunderstood when they discharged her. Wow. And they bought that. I don't know. But they're so short-staffed because of COVID that they decided to only suspend me. Hey, that's not so bad. can't work for two months. I can't afford rent, so I I still have to leave. Where will you go? Whitney? I called my dad. He said he'd be happy for me to stay with him for a bit. 
so I'll be going at the end of the month. Oh, uh, okay. That's, you know. It won't be for too long. No, sure. I, yeah. I guess I wish there was something I could do, too. I tried mushrooms again, but it wasn't so good this time. I got really scared, and I just, um, I needed somebody with me. I'm sorry, Lucy. It's okay. I'll be fine. Like the tip of a needle. Yeah. God, we're just bringing each other down. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing your voice could never bring me down, Philip. Hey, you want to hear something kind of funny? I cheer you up a bit. Oh, what? I'm thinking I might go into seminary. <laughs> uh, are, 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 you, are you joking? Who can tell anymore? <laughs> like, would you really do it? You think, like, you think that might make you happy? Flip is about to respond snidely, but stops and thinks, searching for the right words. End of scene. Scene five, Whitney's new apartment, same as before, later that month. Spotlight on Whitney. She pulls luggage out from behind the stage left door, preparing to leave. She gathers the last of her clothes from the floor. She puts a couple of items on hangers, then stops cold when she comes across the hanger. Nitya straightened. Whitney sits on her luggage, deflated. She pulls out her journal and opens it to where she ripped out her list. She runs her finger over the jagged edges, and she looks off, despondent. When he stands up and walks out of the spotlight, leaving the journal, Another spot lights her, while the original spot remains. Whitney stares at the spot, where we understand her body still sits, then speaks out for the audience. Today's the day I leave our building, Adam. I was supposed to have been gone like over an hour ago, but something throws me up. I'm sitting in this dead apartment with nothing on the walls, and I keep thinking how I'll be breaking a promise to myself if I go back to my dad. Same way I broke a promise to you. And I don't know if I can stand to break another. Then I thought, if I can just break promises like they're nothing, what's the point? Maybe I'll have a drink again, like Flip, and maybe another. Maybe I'll just shrink away if all this growing only ever hurts. And that thought scares me more than anything. I'd do anything to make that stop. The red lights come back on the upstage left door. The violin music returns. Whitney sits, reoccupying her body and grabbing her journal again as the second spot fades. And you, you'll never hear a word of this. And I don't know where you are. And I don't know how you're doing. And I don't know where she is. And I don't know how she's doing. I can't hear the universe anymore. I'm trapped in the dark and no one's here. And what makes it all worse is, as hard as I try, I, I can't understand why I wrote my life like this. Whitney caves into herself, hugging the journal. The violin music swells and the lights on the door deepen and twist. Whitney is still, the lights slowly fade. Just before they fade to black, there's a knock on the door. The lights return to normal and the music fades. Whitney pulls herself up off the floor, sets down her journal, and opens the door, revealing Nitya. Hello. Nitya? Nitya looks healthy. Her color is better, her energy is good, and her robes are now a golden orange. Whitney and Nitya are awkward, not sure how best to greet each other. Uh, uh, come in. Yes. Nitya enters the apartment. I, I, I was good at you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the same building, but this room is different. You are moving in? Uh, I'm moving out, actually. I'm gonna go live with my dad for a little while. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I disturb you, but I felt it was my duty to come and confess. The day I left, I broke a vow. I lied to you. I did not intend to renounce Alekhana. Please forgive my deception. 
but but you're here yes that day when you read me your list i must say i found it childish <laughs> when i left here i was very angry and very weak very small but when the cold air hit my face it gave me a little uh, energy i walked toward my temple but i knew i would not make it then I saw an old man and an old woman. They were out walking, holding hands. They had their dog with them. He was very happy to be outside. Mm. It was so very much like what you wrote in your list. I thought it was so strange. As a Jain, I took a vow to be many-sided in my thinking, and I thought maybe all my anger has made me prideful. Maybe I do still have more to learn. I used your phone and called my temple. that night for the first time in 12 days i ate but on your phone it was disconnected my temple agreed i could not keep it but i asked them to help me find a new doctor and they did oh well, that's wonderful did it did it help with the things that you heard yes my sister jia she is at peace on weekends i go to the mosque and pray for her soul maybe praying to allah is not so good for a jain but it is straight in my head the rest of the time i work at jain temple they say it is not good to break a vow even sade khana so now i help others seek moksha people of all kinds maybe some day i will take the vow of sade khana again but i think it would be very long from now i must also ask forgiveness for not coming to see you sooner i was ashamed ashamed well well of of course i forgive you can you ever forgive me yes i oh i forgot when i opened the door nitya ducks out the door and re enters carrying a beautiful young plant <laughs> this is for you oh nitya she's so pretty oh my god <laughs> oh, look, look at her. I'll call her Elizabeth. Oh my god. I'm, I'm not sure where I can keep her at my dad's place, but still it's a very very nice gift. Thank you so much. There's no gift. I only give back what was yours already. This is a gift. I must give away my last possession. It belonged to my sister. I want you to have it. It is a thank you for uh, helping me to save my life. <sighs> Sounds silly to say. So uh, you are going to live with your father, but I thought you would not want to do this. Um, not hurt you I cannot accept this at my temple we help those who do not have a place you could stay with us if you wanted with me i could help you and yes, yes 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 please 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 <laughs> oh my god that you it's you oh my god it's you it's you that <laughs> with me It is me. Oh, thank God. <laughs> It will be all right. Oh, thank God. It is all right. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Everything thank is all right. Oh, thank God. Thank God. When he continues to cry, as Nitya touches her oh. and gently rocks her back and forth, oh, the way you would your baby sister. Blackout. End of play. <laughs>